Hey everyone, it's Mark. I'm here to help you take control of your life through personal development, smart money habits, and entrepreneurship. If those things sound good to you, then please let me know by clicking the like and subscribe buttons down below. Now let's talk about how you can save a lot more money. If the story of your relationship with money goes something like this, oh boy, money! then this might be one of the most helpful and impactful videos you'll ever have to break that lifestyle. If you want to start saving more money and actually hold on to it, the first step is to create a real budget. And no, I'm not talking about the difference between a pretend budget versus a real budget, but rather a real budget, R-E-A-L. Record everything and live it. And you know what? I've decided that this real budget thing is so important that I'm gonna create one with you right now. Let's head over to my computer and we'll build it out together. All right, let's go ahead and create your real budget. Made that a little bit bigger here, labeled at the top. Now to start off with, what I'll do is I'm going to label, uh, this will be your monthly expenses. Okay and then go ahead and just list out all of the things that you spend on a monthly basis. So this is stuff like your rent or your mortgage, your utilities, uh, any Amazon purchases, streaming, uh, car payment if you have one. What else would it be? Maybe a car wash, gas, your uh, gym membership or fitness memberships, um, haircuts, dry cleaning, uh, pharmacy, phone bill, grocery, restaurant, toll roads, etc. Whatever your monthly expenses are here, just make a list of all the different categories in, um, uh, in different rows here. And then we'll put total at the bottom. And now you want to actually estimate as close to the real world um, spending habits as you can. So rent, maybe that's like you know, 1255 and utilities is equal to um, $75. Amazon, you might budget 150 a month. Now streaming, you might have a multiple different um, services. So let's do equals 999 plus sign 799. And let's say you have like Netflix and something else. And when you hit enter, it will sum those two together. Car payment, let's say that's like $249. Uh, and, and just go ahead and go down and do all these. So like for gas, how many times do you fill up per month? And then how much is it per fill up? So let's say it's $65 per fill up from empty. And you do it four times a month. To do times, it's asterisk. 65 asterisk four. So there it is, 260. Um, what else would be like that? Grocery, let's say it's $200 per trip. You go four times a month, so 200 asterisk four, 200 times four, 800. Okay, so fill out uh, all these categories out and highlight them too, and then make them uh, into a counting format to get the dollar signs. And then for the total, what you'll do is go equal SUM for sum, open the parentheses, and then highlight all of those different rows then close the parentheses and hit enter. And there's your total. So again, it was a sum and does B4. So there's B4 all the way down through B18, which would be the last one here under toll roads. So um, that's equals sum and then the range, which is the starting cell colon last cell is very, very useful because it adds everything up for you. So do that for all your monthly expenses. And then we'll do the same for non-monthly as well. So this might be like your auto registration, um, auto maintenance, um, auto insurance, in case you don't pay every month. I only pay once every six months, for example. This could be your Amazon Prime membership that you pay once per year. Eye exam, uh, dental exam, uh, maybe a Costco membership, um, and anything else. So stuff that you don't pay every single month. Make that bold as well. And then same thing over here too. We'll put the estimated amounts. So auto registration equals 500. Maintenance maybe, I don't know, 350 that you set aside. 
auto insurance maybe that is 600 times two, you pay it twice a year. Prime membership, I believe that's like 119 plus tax, so just call it like 120. Eye exam, let's say that's like $75 plus 250 for your glasses. Okay, dental exam, just a cleaning might be 80 bucks, cost of membership about 60 per year. And same thing, we can write total. And then we go again, equals sum, open parentheses, highlight all of this, let go, close the parentheses and enter. And then we can also highlight these and make them into accounting format as well. Perfect. Um, let's see, and now we also wanna break this down into, <clears throat> so this will be like per year, and this can be per month. So now what we want to do here is just go equals this cell next to it, slash for divided by 12. And you can do the same thing all the way down. Equals the, the yearly amount divided by 12. And to save time, you can actually take the first cell, see the little, the little dot in the corner? When your cursor changes to that black cross, click and drag all the way down to use the same formula all the way down to the bottom. And then for this one here, you can again do sum of all these, but since we did that with here, this one is the sum of everything above it, we can just click and drag this formula sideways. And then that will copy the same formula to do all the sum of all the ones here above. I'll make these bold as well. So now we can see the non-monthly expenses we have on a yearly basis, as well as on a monthly basis. Make these bold, make this total bold as well, just so it stands out. Okay, cool, so we've set up the monthly expenses and the non-monthly expenses, and we put the non-monthly in monthly terms. Let's highlight the non-monthly and just move them over. Click and drag after you highlight. And make the columns you know, fit everything nicely again. And what you wanna do across the top here is just do all the months. So like January, um, February, you can actually highlight these two and then drag them across, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and I'm out of room. Zoom out a bit, we'll move this over a little more. December. Okay, so now you've got all the months uh, going across. And as you go spend your money in all these categories, let's say we're in January, you paid your rent, so you go equals $12.55, but then you go out to eat at a restaurant, uh, that's down here, and let's say the first time you spend $15, so equals 15. And then the second time you eat out, you can go back to the same cell and go plus um, $12.32. And then the third time you eat, go back plus um, $21.55. And that total will continue to run up. So of course, as you make your initial restaurant budget, that should be you know, averaging out, let's say it's equal to $15 per meal times 25 meals per month, enter. 375 is your, is your monthly estimated budget. So now as you record, each individual time you spend money, this will increase and you always can compare it to your actual budget. So I'm gonna highlight this over here, fill that like with a gray, so it stands out. So there you go, and you can always uh, keep track of everything as you move forward. I'm gonna move this uh, non-monthly over a bit so I can see what they are. Perfect. And then for all these totals, again, you can take the formula here, which is the sum of everything above it, and we can just drag that across all of the months here at the bottom, and let go. So now as you populate things, the, the totals will um, add themselves up automatically for you. Okay, now I'm gonna make the non-monthly section over here, just fill it with a different color so that stands out as well. Okay, and now down here what we can do is this can be, um, we'll call this total income, total expenses, um, leave a space, left over, and then we can do pay yourself, and fun money. 
Okay, now for total income, of course there are 26 pay cycles per year, but we're just gonna look at this on a monthly basis on an average type of situation. So let's say you get two paychecks a month. Um, each one, let's say it's like 2,000 bucks just to use an easy number, and you get two of those, so it equals 2,000 asterisk for times two, enter, $4,000. Your total expenses will be equal to your monthly budget plus your non-monthly in the monthly term. So let's add those two numbers together. Uh, equals sum, open parentheses, the first cell, uh, B20, which is your total monthly, and then we'll do comma, the second number, uh, 219.58. So this is going to be the non-monthly uh, in monthly terms. Close the parentheses. Awesome, now we got 340.156. For left over, we can go equals, your total income minus total expenses. Enter, 598 left over, pay yourself. That can be the flat rate, just like equals you know 300, enter. Or it can be a percent. If you wanna do a percent, that could be equal to the leftover amount, P21, times, let's say, 0 0.5 for 50%, enter. So 299. And then fund money will be equal to the leftover amount minus pay yourself, because that's gonna be now what's left over at the very end, enter 299.22. Of course, these will be exactly the same because this one here, the pay yourself was exactly half of what's left over. But let's say we change this to like, you wanna save 60% times 0 0.6, okay? Now you have 239 left over for your fund money. So those are the most important things you can do um, to really get a handle on all these different categories. I'll make sure these are all accounting format. Now that you've completed your real budget, tip number two is to open up four accounts, two checking accounts and two savings accounts. The first of the two checking accounts will be for your income. So no matter if you're working for somebody else, another company, or you're doing your own thing, you got some side gigs, whatever it is, if money comes into you, that money goes into the first checking account. The second checking account is money that you can spend freely with no guilt. Now a lot of banking accounts allow you to nickname your account. So you might even wanna go in there after you open and call it fun money or something like that. But this is the money after you covered all your expenses, you've saved some money. This you can go out and spend at a bar, you can go to you know take a vacation, whatever you want. This is your fun money account. Now we have your two savings accounts. And the first of those two is what I call your set aside account. That's the money you literally set aside every month to cover your non-monthly expenses. And the second savings account is where you're going to pay yourself. So after you've covered all your expenses, you've set aside some money to cover your non-monthly expenses whenever those pop up, now you're going to pay yourself. It can be a flat rate per month or a percentage of whatever's left over. So now um, you'll notice here the total income is really your uh, checking account number one. I'll put that here in red. So all the money you get in goes into that checking account. Then your second checking account is your fund money. And you can go, uh, go ahead and spend that as freely as you want. Your first savings account will be the pay yourself. So this will be savings one. I'll we'll put that one in green. And then the savings account number two will actually be right here, savings two, put that green. And this will be your uh, set aside amount, okay? And that's equal to this non-monthly set aside here. So we can just go equals that cell. Lastly, we have tip number three, and that's to change your identity and your focus. By identity, what I mean is you're now a saver. You are now actively somebody who saves every month and you gotta change your brain and train yourself to actually believe that. And when I say change your focus, you're now focusing on increasing your income going forward. If you only focus on the funds coming in and managing your small budget, then that's the world in which you'll live. 
Remember, the purpose of creating a real budget in the first place was to get you on a budget and you live that out. So when you go out, you're not spending more than that budget. All of that takes care of itself now that you actually have the awareness and understanding of where your money is going and what you have available to spend. If you wanna start taking steps toward financial freedom in your life, you first have to get control of your expenses, keep them low, then increase your income by finding new opportunities to make more money. And the third phase, which would be a topic for a completely separate video, is to take those leftover funds and multiply them. If you enjoyed this video and believe it could benefit others, then please help me get it in front of more people by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications. I'd also love to know if you have questions about anything we covered in today's video. Let me know down in those comments below. I'll see you guys again soon, and remember, you are great.